one on myself. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Kapalaga, baby. As they say, when kids wash their hands, they can eat with kids. <laughs> I've washed my hands. Um, just like she has said, my name is Michael Makande, also known as Kapalaga, baby. I'm an artist from Uganda and a radio presenter <clears throat> and um, the CD for Kapalaga Heart Foundation that was founded in 2016 after um, then we realized that we really needed to help the kids with heart complications. So heart disease is the leading cause of death worldwide taking 23.5% for both men and women, young and mortality, uh, and all mortalities. And uh, in Africa, it's even worse, ladies and gentlemen. The World Health Organization's recent data now shows that fewer people die of HIV AIDS than heart diseases in Africa. According to their report, a total of 20.4% deaths are from diseases related with the heart. And these include the low respiratory tract infections, such as the bronchitis and the pneumonia, and then the ischemic heart diseases. These are caused by high blood, uh, blood pressure, smoking, diabetes, overweight, high cholesterol levels, unhealthy diet, stress, and lack of exercise. When we talk about heart diseases, my focus will be within Africa, and to be specific, my country, Uganda. That is me, ladies and gentlemen, with a number of uh, uh, kids who had complications and their parents. And it is now fashionable in my country today that everyone in their 40s develop the low or high blood pressure. And according to the statistics, one in every four adults has a heart disease. When it comes to the young population, it is really worse. So Uganda has a young population with 49.2% of the population below the age of 14, and thus a very high dependency ratio. And media reports indicate that of the 1.5 children born every year in Uganda, about 15,000 have a congenital heart abnormality. And of those, about 8,000 children require corrective surgeries. Uganda's only heart institute has a capacity to perform only 1,000 heart operations annually, but only a handful can afford the multiple thousands of dollars for those operations, which then leaves a backlog of over 7,000 youngsters every year that are not cared for, plus those, of course, that are not uh, reached out in the research numbers. So, Kapalaga Heart Foundation is um, um, I and my colleagues took it upon ourselves to start a charity organization like she told you when uh, I was approached by a lady with a kid that had a problem and you see in Africa they think when you're a radio presenter or you're a celebrity you have money. So the lady came to me thinking I have money, but I told her I will use what I have to help you. And what I had is, uh, is the name Kapalaga because it's a famous name in my country. So I tried to help her. So we founded this uh, charity organization in 2016 and it takes the name from my stage name, Kapalaga Baby. And currently, the charity organization uh, comprises of over 100 kids. Our primary objective is to promote an, an integrated holistic community-based drive towards identifying, management, and creating a positive perception about the heart complications. And thus, we have a vision of creating an empowered society free from heart complications. Ladies and gentlemen, 
One of the major problems we have in Africa is poverty. In my country, over 68% of the population is living under the poverty line. And these are the people who are mostly hit by this problem. They can hardly get access to Medicare. An ECHO report where they find out whether your kid has a, a, a problem is, uh, costs around $20 and most of them cannot afford it. A simple surgery that is done in my country, the Heart Institute that I talked about, is worth $6,000. And definitely, most of them cannot afford it. So, the government has also not done much. The best they have done is to embezzle the little that is available. And just recently, in 2017, about $200,000 meant for that, uh, the Uganda Heart Institute went missing just like that. Last year, I invited the Vice President to launch uh, the Kapalaka Heart Foundation. I showed him the situation, but uh, uh, I showed him the kids, because the kids were there. But I was only promised $1,000, and uh, that pledge hasn't been fulfilled up to now. Another problem is ignorance. That is Jeremiah Mwongi, our first beneficiary. Um, and I, I want to give you a scenario about uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, just like uh, she said, um, I found her mother way back in 2016 when she wanted help. And we organized uh, through my radio presentations and uh, my concerts, we organized for Jeremiah's um, surgery, and it, ha it happened. But after the surgery, because the mother wasn't educated enough on how to take care of the kid after the surgery, she would go with him to the gardens to dig. She would expose him to the dirty homestead. And eventually, ladies and gentlemen, just after two weeks, uh, um, in two weeks after the surgery, Jeremiah died because of an infection. He actually did die because of the surgery, because of the heart problem, but because of the infection. I'll give you another example. A scenario of a young woman who was abandoned by her husband when she gave birth to a baby with a heart condition because he believed it was bad omen. The gentleman believed in his family no one can have a child with a heart problem. And so it is a bad omen. The lady is bringing a bad omen to, to the man's family. So, as a result, the man had to abandon the lady and the lady was left to struggle alone with her sick daughter and the rest of her children as the man went on to marry another woman and later the kid had to die because the woman could not handle it. So these and so many scenarios forced us to initiate incentives such as cardiology awareness programs that will at no cost educate the public about heart complications, how to avoid them through vigorous physical exercises, primary health care, and all that. So we normally arrange, uh, go to the villages, and show these people that they could actually avoid the heart complications through the vigorous uh, physical activities like football, running, and all that. We solicit funds to avail treatments and teach them, uh, teach these people about the post-surgery health care. However, because of the uh, lack of funds, we've only been able to do this at a very little scale. And we've recorded quite a number of successes, some of which you can see from our website, 
which is www.kapalakaartfoundation.org. And we've mainly got these funds from my personal musical concerts and fundraising through the radio shows, which is also uh, unsustainable. Hence, many uh, conditions go unattended uh, to. But just like you see, the um, Brian was operated on from uh, India, and then Betty was operated on from USA, and then uh, this young kid was operated on from Uganda, and a few others. But we cannot be able to sustain this because it requires a lot of money, and we've not gotten any support from the government. We just uh, doing this from our own uh, means. So, ladies and gentlemen, in 1990, it was estimated that by 2020, the cardiovascular diseases will become the leading cause of the global health burden. And according, accounting for 73% of total global mortality and 56% of total mobility. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed cheaper and more effective to take population-based measures to prevent heart diseases and stroke than it is to treat the people with surgery and drugs once the cardiovascular diseases are established. I am therefore appealing not to, uh, to not only you in this building but to the world to become our friends. Please become our friends, come, teach us how we can, because we are not doctors, I'm not a doctor, I'm a simple musician, uh, a local musician for that. I don't know anything, they, they've been teaching here, I, I've been seeing that maybe I'll be a doctor sometime to come, but currently I'm not. Become our friends, help us, teach us, tell us what to do to help these kids, guide us. Um, you could uh, be knowing where we can go for uh, for funds, for example. Please advise us because we don't know. We could, uh, the best we could, we could get is to contact Madame Lisa. And I, I want to thank you very much for giving us the opportunity uh, to show you how we really uh, need help. As our motto says. It takes a heart to save a heart. You must have a heart to save a heart. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. My language we say, Mwewari Nyo, Mwewari Nidara. My Kokakani is my name, and the city of Kapalaka Heart Foundation. And that is our website, www.kapalakaheartfoundation.org. Our email address is kapuganda.gmail.com. Thank you very much. What surgeries are usually done in your center? Um, I, just like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, but uh, the, 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 they normally tell us about the ASD. Yes. Yeah, ASD are very common. Uh, that, that's what they do. Uh, the kind of surgeries they do in the country, but most of the surgeries are meant to be done outside the countries. We've only met um, around 12 patients that, are, uh, that we have helped out of thousands. Is there a surgery done in your um, center or is there any health issues to do it over there? Yeah, there is a heart, there is, um, a heart issue. Um, on the, on no the, in my no, you know, we want to do that. If we want to help you, uh, a team of our country, and go to your country and operate some of the patients, is that possible? I would be very, very pleased. <laughs> that is what I'm doing. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you.
one on myself. Yeah, Balaga, baby.